So, EMF, what does EMF mean? EMF, uh, we've been dealing with the last few days, means the electrical energy given to each column of charge as it passes through the source is termed the EMF of the source. How much energy each column of charge has? <laughs> this is really weird. <laughs> Talk to myself again. Um, okay, so each each kilo of charge has a certain amount of energy. As it passes through the source, that is defined as EMF. I think I'm just going to talk to you. That actually helps. Just look at your faces. Okay, so that's how much EMF is. So we copy down the EMF and what it means. That definition needs to be remembered as part of the for your for the, the test. Okay. So uh, now we're looking at how we derive resistance formula. Now der derivation is a new word. Derivation, don't do that. <laughs> Turn around. This is so difficult enough as it is. Right. So, for the benefit of J, J wasn't here, so this, gives, this is good, right. In higher, we need to be able to derive the formula for resistance in series and parallel circuits. This doesn't mean just look at the formula book and say this is what they are. It means, how do we get that formula from the formula book? And the two formulas we need to be able to derive are the resistance in a series, in, in a resistance in a series circuit, which is RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, and resistance in a parallel circuit, which is 1 over RT plus 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. As I said, to derive something is not just to state the formula. To derive something is to means to explain how the formula is created and where does it come from. How do we actually get that formula? No one's looking at me now. Come on, this is making this hard. Jay, you should be looking at me. You can look at the board. Okay, right, so where does it come from? Where does the derivation come from? How do we derive something? Right, so the first one we're going to look at is the resistance in a series circuit. And we could draw the diagram. So there's a diagram on the left-hand side. So, we use conservation of energy. Now, conservation of energy means making sure that the voltage is the same around the circuit. So, let's just show you all just now. Um, the, in a series circuit, the voltage is what's shared among the components in a series circuit, <laughs> meaning that, like it's a gave you a definition from EMF, the voltage is a like to how much energy each coulomb of charge has. So, use the conservation of energy. We're conserving this, char this energy that each coulomb of charge has. The amount of EMF that comes out the source must be the same as the amount of energy that goes back in. And this is one of the use, rules of the universe, conservation of energy. The energy given out by the source must be equal to the sum of the, the energies used in the circuit. Okay, so we, we, if we can write down the conservation of energy, that would be the first part of our derivation. And then we use this, get this formula here by saying the voltage across AD, which is the voltage across the, the source, is equal to the voltage across each of the components. And a series circuit we know the current is constant, so that'll be another part of our information. So we can say, we can divide both sides by current and nothing's going to happen. We use our Ohm's law formula, which is this formula here, to state that V equals IR, R is V over I. We can put that in here, because we've divided both sides by I, and that gets us RT equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now the five pieces of information I have, possibly six, are you must say conservation of energy, you must write down the formula what conservation of energy means, you must say the current is constant. You must use V equals IR to get your V over I. Uh, and then you must substitute in your R values for that. And that gives you your derivation for resistance, resistance in a series circuit. Right, resistance in a parallel circuit is quite similar, except we can't use conservation of energy. There is no conservation of energy, really, that's making any difference in a parallel circuit. The amount of energy going in is the amount of energy coming out, because the voltage is the same across each of the branches. So. The total number of electrons must be the same. You can't, they can't disappear. The amount of electrons coming out the source must be equal to the number of electrons going into the source. I'm talking quite fast. Right. So, <laughs> the total number of electrons coming out the source must be the same as those coming in. Electrons are charged. The flow of electrons is current. So therefore, we're going to use conservation of charge, which is conservation of current. Hang on, two minutes. Okay, so, if it's conservation of charge, the total current must be equal to the current through 1, plus the current through 2, plus the current through 3. So, this, this conservation, oops, this conservation of, oops. <laughs> Thanks, Alison, for laughing at me. Okay, conservation of charge here, the current going through this must be equal to the current through this, plus the current through this must be the total current. The potential difference across each of the branches is the same. We divide both sides by V using this formula here. Now, this is a tricky bit here. The fact that you've got um, you've got one over R is I over V that could stumble, you could that could cause you to make mistakes. Put that into here, and then you've got one over R T equals one over R one plus one over R two plus one over R three, and that's how we get resistances in a parallel circuit. 
I'll get that.